All right, let's take a shot at uh, practice problem four associated with sample problem E. Now this one's gonna be a doozy. Okay, this one's gonna be a doozy, so uh, strap in. Uh, but let's start with, uh, with a bad with a setup. Uh, salmon often jump waterfalls to reach their breeding grounds. Oh, nobody knew that. One salmon starts 2.00 meters from a waterfall that is 0.55 meters tall and jumps at an angle of 32 degrees, 32.0 degrees. What must be the salmon's minimum speed to reach the waterfall? Okay, so uh, we have a setup here uh, where, again, we can simply define our coordinate systems. You guys uh, know our, our normal setup here. Uh, but what does the question actually tell us is going on here? Um, we know that um, we have... We have a triangle here. Uh, we know that <clears throat> the salmon starts two meters away. Okay, uh, so and the waterfall is 0 0.55 meters tall. Okay, so that's an x component and then a y component. We're being asked for this this uh, resultant here. So what's um, what's this vi? But we also have an angle, right, with respect to uh, the horizontal, uh, 32.0 degrees, okay? Uh, now, we are being asked to solve for VI. Uh, in order to solve for VI, uh, I can also represent this a, a little bit more clearly if I draw uh, another triangle. You guys know uh, that... See where I'm at, where I'm at, where I'm at. Okay, um, that if, if I'm trying to solve for this VI um, and I, I don't have this stuff, like I, I know how far uh, the, the salmon needs to, to overcome, it needs to overcome that two meters in the X direction, it needs to overcome the uh, 0.55 meters in the Y direction, but uh, I'm looking for a velocity here. You know, but you guys know from previous uh, previous problems that I can break that initial velocity up into initial velocity in the x direction and initial velocity in the y direction. Now if I get, uh, if, if I can get those, uh, you guys know our, our skills so far, we can figure out the resultant. <clears throat> um, but, so here's the angle as well. So in order to figure out this uh, initial velocity in the x direction, Okay, in the x direction, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to skip some of the derivation just because this would be really, really long if I if I did not. Uh, initial velocity in the y direction. Gosh darn it, I screwed that up. Um, well, I'll write it down here first. Initial velocity in the x direction. So here's the x direction. That's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. That's going to be the actual initial velocity times the uh, cosine, right, adjacent over hypotenuse. But for the y direction, it's going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so initial velocity times the sine of the angle. Okay, so what I have here is um, a, a situation where I'm going to end up needing two equations, and I'm going to have to, sub, I'm going to, have to do some substitution. Right? I have two equations, uh, and I'm going to have two different unknowns, so I'm going to have to use the substitution method. So what I'm going to use for uh, the x direction, x direction equation, I'm going to go uh, in the x direction, xi, okay, uh, again, we're, talk we're talking about, uh, talking about, we're trying to get to velocities here. Uh, plus vi in the x direction times t uh, because this end up being uh, numerically zero okay I end up with uh, delta delta x uh, is equal to initial velocity times cosine of the angle multiplied by t or I guess delta t I didn't use my deltas in here So you guys have seen this setup before, okay? 
Uh, and then we have our y direction equation. Uh, for this one, uh, we are going to use uh, let's see what do we want to use? Oh yeah, sorry, messed up there for a minute. That delta y, uh, we're we're going to be using uh, that. Gosh, well, I'm, gonna, I'm blanking out here. Okay, so. Vi in the y direction, okay, times time plus one half at squared. Okay, now I hope this isn't confusing you here. So, so we have displacement. Here's an initial velocity, but we're talking about just the y direction. So I'm going initial velocity in the y direction, okay, and I know that initial velocity in the in the y direction is actually this. Okay, so I can I can actually substitute that in there. Um, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to try to uh, substitute one of I'm going to solve one of these equations for uh, for an unknown uh, and out of these two equations that I have right here um, actually I haven't even finished solving for this so so viy is going to be equal to this so let me actually uh, sub that in there it's going to be v I sine theta and, and then the rest of the gobbledygook okay so I, I now have these two equations to choose from so I have uh, a couple of things that I don't know like I, I don't know uh, VI okay so I could rearrange this equation to solve VI or uh, and then plug th whatever this represents in for VI uh, that's that's definitely a way to go that, that might be a little uh, tricky because of because of the squared over here um, what I'm going to do here let's see what is the best thing to do I'm gonna solve I'm gonna solve for this VI that way I can uh, plug VI in yeah yeah I'll do that okay so I'm gonna solve for VI I'm just gonna divide cosine theta times delta T okay so that'll Cancel, cancel, cosine theta delta t. And so I'll end up with an equation that solves for vi, uh, and that's going to be delta x divided by cosine theta delta t. Okay, so the cosine of the angle multiplied by the time. That'll give me something that I can, uh, well, I, I have solved for, for vi, but I don't know exactly what the time is. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to substitute this value into this equation for vi because I, I have something that represents vi. So let me put that in right there. Now once I've done that, uh, the only the only unknown that I'll have left is t, this delta t, okay? Because I actually do have a value for delta y. Right, for, uh, from the actual equation. So um, let's do that. Delta y. Uh, so, gosh, this ends up being. Oh, this is going to be annoying. Delta x cosine theta delta t. And then I also have to multiply that by the sine of theta there plus one half acceleration times time squared Whew. Um, gosh that does not look good um, so oh you know what I did gosh darn it okay so I didn't I didn't transfer this delta t in there that's why I was freaking out and I don't know if you guys saw this I did not copy down this delta t into that next equation that so that screwed me up screwed me up big time so there actually should be a delta t right there sorry about that it's gonna mess me up but what that allows me to do is these t uh, two terms are multiplying by one another it means I can actually cancel them out now sorry that was I was getting real fused there 
So um, I can get rid of those uh, those t's there, th those times, and I'm trying to solve for t in general. So I do want to get it by itself. Okay. So I'm gonna have. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Clean this up. Dot x sine theta uh, divided by cosine theta plus one half a delta t. <clears throat> um, but I'm trying to get uh, this by itself, so uh, I'm going to get rid of this. So I'm going to subtract delta x sine theta over cosine theta from both sides. So uh, I'm actually going to do one more in between step here. Um, I'm actually, forget it. Now, in order to solve for t, I'm going to have to multiply both sides by uh, 2. Right? So that, that one half will cancel. And I'm also going to have to divide both sides by a. Right, so a's will cancel. And then I'm going to have to square root everything so that square goes away. Oh, it's already at an angle there. And so uh, when I clean up all this gobbledygook, I have a, a delta t is equal to, say so I have a 2 over a, and then I have a what do I have? Maybe a delta y minus delta x sine theta all divided by cosine theta. Whew. And that's all square rooted. All right, so maybe you're seeing why uh, this uh, is a bad problem, okay? This gets really, really dirty. Um, but what we have here is a situation which we're solving for uh, delta t. Okay, we're solving for delta t. And once, sorry, because uh, we have acceleration, we have delta y, uh, we have delta x, and we know what theta is. Okay, so this ends up being uh, two acceleration due to gravity, and then delta y is 0 0.55. It's going to be minus um, 2.00 meters times the sine of what's my angle? 32. 32 degrees divided by the cosine of 32 degrees. And all of that is going to be square rooted. And this ends up being. 0 0.3, let's see, um, do my sig figs at the end, so it should be seconds, right? Because we have, that's going to be square rooted, that's on a denominator, this meter, those meters will cancel out with this meter, yeah, so we'll have seconds for our unit, and um, what I can do here when I'm trying to uh, solve for my, again, Oh, sorry, initial velocity, okay, this initial velocity, uh, what I can do is solve initial velocity. It's going to be delta x divided by delta time, the cosine of the angle. Now, if, if you're not sure how to get uh, to this, go watch uh, the, the past couple of uh, videos, practice problems uh, one, two, and three with sample problem E. You'll be able to, this will make plenty of sense to you. But once I do that, I can just substitute in 2.00 meters, substitute in the value that I just got for time. And then the cosine of the angle, which is 32 degrees. Whoa, that was weird. Um, 
but the numbers are gonna be fine. Uh, and then I want to use what three sig? Uh, no, two sig figs. No, sig figs should I use three, three? Oh, two. I use two for my answer. So, uh, calculator tells me some of this stuff, and that's four. Yeah, so I'll keep that at two. All right, so this has been a gnarly problem, guys. It's been a very, very gnarly one. So, again, we had to use that substitution technique again, right? And so what we did is we, we had two equations, one in the x direction, one in the y direction, okay? And what we did here is we created an equation that allowed us to solve for the initial velocity, okay, the actual initial velocity, because that's what we're going for. But the initial velocity, the, the total initial velocity is going to be, again, we solve this equation, delta x over cosine delta t. Uh, and, and that's what we actually did down here. But we, we don't actually have a value for t. We, we, we have nothing to plug in for t. So in order to solve for t, we took this uh, expression and we plugged it in for this initial velocity. Okay. So what that did is it got rid of all of our unknowns except for time, okay? So once this expression was in here, there was no more uh, initial velocity, just time. And so we could actually uh, go through these steps of solving for time, okay? And we came up with uh, this rearrangement to actually solve for the time. And once we did that, we were able to plug in uh, the values that we have, right? We know what A is. Uh, Sorry, we know what a is, we know what delta y is, we know what delta x is, we know what theta is, so we can do sine and cosine of each of those, and we were able to finally solve for time. Now, once we had time, we can go back up to this equation, plug it in for time right here. Again, we have delta x, we have the angle, and we're able to simply solve for initial velocity. Okay, that's a rough one. Uh, a couple of those intermediate steps weren't jiving for you. Go back. Uh, to the previous uh, three uh, practice problems, and hopefully that'll become more and more clear.